Cities, restaurants, hotels, casinos, Excel Center. If you live in the Twin Cities, you've been eating my, my bread products for 30 years without even knowing it. We sell it to people and they serve it as their own. But we design foods for every corner of the planet. But uh, I've been very fortunate. I've had great teachers. I've been sent to different parts of the world. Um, if you go down to the island, Harriet Island, for the Irish Festival, I'm the, I've been the Irish soda bread judge, and I've been known to take bribes, so if you want to have a winner, <laughs> you know, the show is only as good as you make it. But anyways, uh, it really is nice uh, to be here, and I want to start off by saying thank you so much for supporting Malarkey, thank you so much for supporting KFAI, and with that, uh, we're going to start off getting the business. Mary O and I have uh, a recipe, so in addition, to talking about potato bread. Dump it in. And then just bang it. There you go, there you go. Everything's in, except the shortening. She makes me do that. Thanks, there you go. Okay, put that back, come back. Bread baking. Um, as well. She has it in the first gears, and uh, a lot of bakeries in the Twin Cities have everything calibrated to time. Um, most bakeries would have an alarm set for two minutes, and then they would kick it into high. Potato flour, because we don't have a kitchen here, we do not use actual potatoes so for this. Here's, now, here's one of the thoughts, and we're, I knew we were going to get into this with you, Mix, but when you're making potato bread, it's obvious like that you want to use potatoes, right? Yeah. If you go to Facebook, my name on Facebook is Danny Klecko. I would be happy to be all your friends. Or you don't even have to be my friend. You could follow me, but to get to the point, I have a potato bread recipe on there, which is an authentic one for you guys to make in your kitchen. Once the bread comes out of the mixer, a sourdough might sit for 12 hours. Um, so you're going to under mix that a little bit. The potato bread we mix immediately, or, or I'm sorry, we scale it immediately. So we want it to be produced and developed. And one of the best ways that we have what we call the window pane theory, where we stretch it like this. And with a, with a traditional bread, I should be able to get it to a point where the window, I should be able to see the silhouette of your body but it shouldn't be to the point where I should be able to tell the color of your eyes or anything like that. You'll also see little minuscule bubbles that are within that dough. So if, uh, if you're in a bakery or if you're at home, this is not a good time to be talking on the phone. It's not a good time. No one in my family wants to cook with me because I take it serious. I mean, I listen to my food because your food is telling you when it's ready, what to do, and the next thing. Is that the rest of it? Yep. We're gonna scale one pound loaves. And to scale it, we have a balance, I'm gonna set it to one pound. Oftentimes in the bakery, let's see if I can have it here. Those, this is what young people use, it's a dough cutter. And you go like this, and it's a uh, pretty close. Um, it's a pretty nice uh, tool. You, you can scrape tables or whatever, however, because I'm really not young, but all oh, the repetitive use of the initial impact that blew my elbow off probably about five or six years ago. So if you're older, like Pleco, you can just take a knife and drag it across the dough, and you don't have the blunt impact. So. And we're going to go like this. Pounding. You want to get your dough ready. People are so nervous and they're so timid with it. I get to go like, look at this, people. Okay, that's bread dough. You can punch it, drag it, run over it with your car, and it's really tough to mess up a, a potato bread. But the one thing that we're really striving for here is tightness. 
and see if I can do this. If I'm not trying to be a show off, I'm just showing you. Even with one hand, you can get this. Maybe that one real quick. And I'll then put out your. You can take two hands, you know, like this. You don't even know how impressive this is until like four minutes from now when you're all doing this. Right. <laughs> Scaling and start throwing them over to this side. Come on, there we go. Is there a? I don't know. Is there anyone? And then if either of you get bored and want someone else to scale, you can do that too. Now the rest of you, this is a point where everyone in the building should be silent, the only time of the day you should be paying all attention to the table, because this is the hardest part of baking, and it's the most important part of baking, is the hand work on the brush. Go like this, pull it like this, you fold it over, see that, like a C or whatever, and then I do it again, press down, fold it over again, all right? I have the Queen of Shamrocks here. May I show your body for a moment? Sure. Okay, I'm going to need you to stand right here. I'm going to show you how easy this is. You're going to go like this and tilt your hands. Oh, no, let, let your arms loose. Let me, <laughs> let me have control of your arms. At this angle, note the angle of the hands, people. Often, don't move. Oftentimes you'll see people going like this. Going in a circle does nothing. It's tightening the loaf. And what the... I don't know. Tell me. At least I know what 90 degrees is. <laughs> well, I, I want to slap things on the ground. You gotta push it hard. Look at that. Look at Richard. Richard is superior. We're almost done with the rounds. gases inside that bread that will implode if we don't let them release. However, one of the mistakes people make is they'll just think you can cut it any which way. But if you go like this, like on the French baguette, you see the pattern like this, and make sure you go over and look at the breads already made to look at the scoring patterns. We have that way, that's way number one, and then we have Way number two. This is five diagonal lines, and this is five. Osiela Armenta, this is his signature. Every loaf of bread he does this. So when I go to one of my two to three hundred accounts, and I step into their kitchen, by the cutting pattern, I can tell which one of my bakers has made that loaf of bread. It's like a fingerprint. So um, we're going to use these knives, but once again, if you want your kid to do it, parents are responsible. Um, <laughs> When you take it, you don't want the knife to go straight like this, because then the cut is too deep and gashing. You kind of want to go at a little bit of an angle, probably at about a 45 degree angle. You go like this, and you can cut across like this, or you can kind of curve it, do weird things. I mean, it's up to you, but we have eggs, potato flour, knives in a single file fashion, and you're going to go first, you're going to head this way because you're with a small one. Let's walk straight up this way and then up for a while. You can get something. Two nights of drunken peeps. You have glasses in the fog up, but everybody get your proof box experience and we'll talk after that. I'm going to take this to the professional jet stream, so if you make room, make room, it will be cool in minutes. 
Hey guys, Mary O has to go to work. Everybody thank her, Mary O. You come and get, get first place. Mary O gets first place. First place.